Starfield can get pretty overwhelming and it doesn't always tell you the things you need to know. Sometimes that can be a good thing, but there are so many unmentioned essential features that I had to put together a list of the most helpful and the most interesting ones. Some of these are going to completely change how you play the game. So let's not waste any more time and jump right into the list. In Starfield, you'll find yourself opening the map a lot and sometimes to an annoying degree. Navigation can be tricky at times and as pretty as it is, the map isn't always the easiest thing to use. So one of the ways to retain some of that immersion and avoid the hassle is by fast traveling straight from your ship, without the use of the map at all. By using the scanner inside your ship and scanning the space around you, followed by repeated pressing of the interact button to cycle through the different available locations, you can fast travel quicker and more smoothly to anywhere in your current system. Occasionally, you can even fast travel to nearby systems. Additionally, and probably the most helpful feature I use constantly, is fast traveling straight from your quest log. By opening up the quest tab and selecting a quest, you can click the button Set Course, which will take you directly to the location of your quest step in the map view, regardless of which system you're in. This automates some of the navigation and avoids you having to fumble around trying to find the exact planet, moon, or space station. It's pretty invaluable when you've taken on 50 different missions and have dozens of active quests. If you end up starting your game and realizing you're not quite happy with your character's face or body, don't worry because you can change it later. Visit Jemison's commercial district and find the shop Enhance, which is pretty close to the spawn area. You'll need to pay a small fine of 500 credits, and then you're able to adjust everything from your jawline to your hair color so you don't have to live with seeing that horrible monster you created. Well, all our services are at your disposal. If you also end up not liking the name you've chosen for your character, you can change that here as well. And there's a good reason for changing it, because Vasco, your robot companion, has the ability to say in his dialogue a pretty sizable list of names when addressing the player. Captain Ash, hello. Even some really unexpected names. It's slightly disappointing that Bethesda seems to have left out some real iconic captain and commander names, but at least there's still a lot to choose from. I'll leave this list in the description if you want to see every name available, and if you do pick one, try spelling it exactly how it appears in the list, with the correct capitalization. Contraband is something the game kind of lets you figure out on your own, but there's actually quite a bit to it. First off, if an item has a yellow icon on it, like this, it means that this item is contraband, and if you try to land at a major location, you can actually be arrested for carrying it. The red icon is similar, except instead of contraband, it means it's a stolen item. Now contraband is usually worth quite a bit of credits, as you'd imagine, and smuggling it around early on can be difficult, but luckily there's a place you can go to sell it without being detained or killed for having it. There is a system nearby both Sol and Alpha Centauri called the Wolf, and here you can find a space station called the Den. Upon arriving, you won't be scanned unlike major settlements, and you can freely sell your contraband to the Trade Authority vendor. If the vendor runs out of credits to buy more of your contraband, Try passing time by sleeping in your ship's bed or sitting down at one of the seats inside the space station. The Trade Authority vendor also sells some cool items you can pick up, even if you don't have any contraband. Once you get farther into the game, you can add a shielded cargo hold to your ship. This will allow you to smuggle contraband safely through major settlements such as New Atlantis or Aquila City. This isn't something I've unlocked myself as I was too early in the game to purchase it, but you can buy new ships and upgrade current ship parts through Trade Authority NPCs, which may also be called ship service technicians across the game. In addition to the benefits you get from unlocking and leveling up your skill trees, you can also find collectible items called skill magazines scattered throughout the game. These magazines give you small skill bonuses for collecting them and can be sold for credits later on. These bonuses include things like reduced fall damage, extra weapon damage, increased magazine size, and even reduced fuel consumption for grab jumps. If you want to know where to find some of these magazine collectibles for yourself, I have a playlist up on my channel right now that shows the location of some of them and I'll continue to update it as I find more of them. When you're running around and collecting resources with your mining laser, you can speed up how quickly you're able to harvest the materials by aiming down sights while firing it. ADSing while firing will mine resources quicker at a cost of draining the laser's energy faster. Using a mining laser isn't the only way to get resources though. You can actually destroy asteroids with your ship's weapons 
and you'll get rewarded with valuable resources for crafting. This is awesome if you want to spend more time in space and have more of a reason to practice your piloting skills. But it's not just crafting resources that you can get from this. You also have a small chance of getting loot caches that were buried within the asteroid. These loot caches have a chance to contain epic and legendary items, which you can collect from within your ship as you fly past them. If you're like me and find yourself obsessively looting every corner of every structure you visit, then you'll be happy to know that your starting ship comes built in with a large cargo capacity of 450 items. This is the perfect place to store crafting materials, weapons, clothes, and even cute little plushies. If you fill up your ship or are carrying too much to fast travel back to it, you can make your companions carry things for you, so you don't have to suffer with a depleting oxygen bar just from trying to walk. Now you might be hesitant to start putting everything on your ship because when you visit a crafting workbench for your weapons or spacesuit, your natural instinct is to probably bring all those crafting materials with you. But what's awesome is that your ship's cargo is automatically linked to the crafting bench or resource terminal that you're currently using without needing to physically carry around all of your items. As you can see in the footage, it says in the top right that I currently have 13 Argon available, but when I check my person, I don't actually have it on me. Your personal scanner is useful for so many things in the game, but it can also really come in clutch for those of us with a terrible sense of direction. By using your scanner with a quest mission tracked, the scanner can display a path to follow on the ground, leading you to your current mission objective. Using the scanner is also great for quickly finding where your ship is if you're lost or can't fast travel to it. An awesome feature that I didn't even notice until about 12 hours into the game was this hide spacesuit option at the bottom of your screen when viewing a spacesuit in your inventory. If you toggle this button, it will remove your spacesuit, leaving you dressed in your normal apparel whenever you enter a settlement. If you check your inventory, your suit will still be equipped and will magically reappear when leaving a settlement. It's great for immersion and showing off your fashion, and for the convenience of spending just a little bit less time in your menu. If you love taking screenshots in any games, you'll really like this returning feature previously seen in Fallout 76. Any picture that you take with the in-game photo mode will get saved to the gallery and will randomly become the backgrounds of your loading screen throughout the game. Here you can see some of the photos I've taken from my playthrough that ended up as my loading screens. If you're looking to recruit new members into your crew, you can head to the viewport located on Jemison. It's really close to where you first land on the planet. Here you can find several different aspiring crewmates, each with their own set of skills and areas of expertise. However, you aren't able to hire more crew without paying them first, and some of them aren't willing to work for less than what you have in your bank account at the beginning of the game. Some of them may be able to be persuaded to work for less if you're given the option in the dialogue, which is a great way to cut down the cost. You'll have to assign them to your ship, which may mean unassigning a current crew member depending on how many crewmates you have. So there you go, that's 15 things to get you started in Starfield, and hopefully this makes your experience a whole lot better. Thanks for watching, and if you stayed until the end, please drop a like on the video and subscribe if you want to see more guides soon.